are reaching the end of Black History Month, which means we will no longer be able to celebrate black history until next year because for some reason that's the concept people seem to be the most okay with. And I've been proud knowing that throughout these few weeks we have not really seen too much stupidity from individuals who care so much about their skin color or the fact that it's Black History Month. And that lets me know that my seed of common sense has been inseminated into more and more people so that they realize doing all these stupid things for the sake of discussion, topics, or conversation, and overall just dumb assery is not needed. You don't have to do all of these things, and it makes me proud. But even though I've put in the necessary work to teach the young minds how to not be stupid, it seems as if we have reached yet another topic of conversation. And this picture right here is going around on social media. It shows two doors at West Charlotte High School. One door is labeled colored entrance. The other door is labeled white entrance. Above is a sign that's labeled Sears Department Store 1930. Well, I reached out to CMS about this picture. They say that teachers decorated it on Wednesday for a history lesson. CMS calls the display inappropriate content and not aligned with its curriculum or the state's curriculum. In a statement, CMS also tells me once school leadership was made aware of the doors, the displays were immediately removed. This all happened over just a few hours. CMS also says the district teachers will be retrained. I am going to position myself as the devil's favorite advocate for a moment because I could see what the teacher was attempting to do. I could see it's February, you want to teach about the history of black people and what they've had to go through in America, and you want to do a visual aid so that people know, yes, black people, black kids, on occasion black teenagers, black elderly had to go through something like this back in the day, and now we don't really have to go through this unless you're somebody who wants to be racist and you're a piece of shit or you somehow want to call it prejudice because you don't have the institutional power to be racist. What I see is somebody has done a, a very good job at recreating um, and illustrating what the times has been like for, for black people. We're more often than not. Opening the door to powerful conversations about race, or is it? Classroom doors at West Charlotte High School decorated by teachers for Black History Month. One shows a Motown theme. Another has a message from chains to change. But it's this one, illustrating a Sears department store in 1930, with one door labeled colored entrance and the other white entrance that has some people upset. If it's out of context alone, then it may raise some questions or, you know, spark controversy. But looking at it in its totality, I don't think you can tell a black story in America without talking about um, segregation. However, my counter to that is instead of the visual aid, you could have just sat everybody down, put a TV in front of their faces and shown them literally any movie that you could come up with or documentary that pertains to slavery, racism, segregation, or Jim Crow. There's a fucking bunch of them. I remember the infamous Martin Luther King cartoon, which still a classic no matter what any of you say. But here's the overall thing about history. It's important to teach it and it's important to learn from it because teaching it inspires the young minds to know how life used to be back in the olden days when everything was in black and white and how trivial and how bad it was for a certain group of people. In certain group whichever one you want to put in and how far we've come as a society even though we're still dumb and how much the past is not reflective of our present and the future and learning from it is to make sure that none of you people who see all of this history doom yourself by repeating it and unfortunately a lot of people haven't really learned too much from it and they've been repeating it over and over and over again with the premise being that hey we don't really have institutional power we're not rich we are the victims of something systemic so we have all the rights in the world to be discriminatory and insult a bunch of people based on their skin color not their character and there's not really a problem with it because we're the victims and that's the perfect way to respond to it trigger warning this is what we call a culture conversation for the melanated folks you get what i'm saying so this ain't you x left we ain't talking to you we don't care what you got to say but with the whole thing with racism and bigotry it's a new thing going on in 2024 of course they stole the land they stole the resources they stole pretty much the culture they stole everything from us but now in 2024 they trying to steal the damn struggle from us they trying to steal the word racism all right because anytime we talk about them or call them out on their bullshit now oh a black person they they cut me in line that was racist uh you're you're talking about white people that's racist black guy called me a, a, a slur that's racist black person might have been prejudiced to you they might have been mean to you they might have been 
ignorant to you. They may have been an asshole to you, but they weren't racist to you because we don't have the power to be racist. You get what I'm saying? We don't have the power to, you know, deny you a bank loan or give you a, a longer jail sentence or deny you jobs or make you check off on the box what your race is. You get what I'm saying? We don't own the judicial system. We don't have law enforcement up under our control. We don't have the KKK running the country last I checked. Y'all got that. And they try to, you know what I'm saying, downplay like, oh, that's the government and, and the higher ups, they're trying to divide. They look just like you, last I checked. So the people that support racism are racist. Last I checked, most black person can do is not like you, call you a name. But other than that, we don't have the power to oppress. You get what I'm saying? The, the culture know what I'm talking about. And any racist person is going to get triggered. Feel free to jump in the comments and reveal yourself like an idiot. Man, like I'm so tired of seeing you fucking snow roaches. And so you think because you write a check or you slide me something in Venmo that you're absolved and you can tell somebody, well, I gave Dr. Blay $100. I'm not racist. Dr. Blay is going to spend your $100 and still tell you that you're racist. She goes by the name Hero, and she has a lot of work to do to get this Bucktown gallery space ready to host her art exhibit this weekend. That exhibit has garnered much more attention than originally expected since the 23-year-old artist distributed these flyers around the city for the show called White Only with a drawing of a noose. Racism is alive and prevalent today as much as we want to act like it doesn't exist. And you live it every day. I live it every single day. Some critics have complained the flyers suggest they come from white supremacists or some other hate group. I believe that people should understand what a noose on, a, um, on anything will represent. And, you know, it represents the blood of, of of my ancestors. The signs contain little information, but offer a QR code which links to the show's website. There, the artist offers some explanation of her philosophy. I can't draw a picture of a flower without it representing all of my ancestors being deflowered. One of the prominent works in the show is a depiction of Hero and her sister when they were children being detained and questioned by police wearing white hoods just blocks from their home. Something that is based on real experience, she says. I think all art is supposed to invoke some type of emotion and like that emotion shouldn't always have to be sadness or anger. Sometimes art can just be happy. No, I don't necessarily have a problem with this teacher doing visual aid. Could there have been a different avenue? Yes, you just heard me describe it a couple seconds ago. So we reach an impasse where I must ask you, the viewer, what do you think about this? Do you think it was good visual aid? Did you think it was bad? Even though the school said, yes, this was bad, take it down, would you have gone a different route with this? Or would you have not participated in door decorations in any capacity whatsoever because you are like me, traumatized by the concept of if we win, we get a pizza party and then we don't do good and we don't get a pizza party whatsoever. Subscribe to the channel. I will see you all in the next one. Goodbye.